Hello, welcome to my presentation named a transaction level model for blockchain privacy. This is François-Xavier Wicht and this is joint work with Ji Peng Wang from the Imperial College London, Duke Wheeler from Visa Research and Christian Cachin, my advisor from the University of Bern. The agenda for this presentation is first an intro, then I'll talk about the model, the PDAG, Privacy Preserving Transaction DAG. And then I'll talk about privacy notions. So the, the core of this work actually. Well, let's be honest. Privacy is certainly one of the most important property of a currency. If you had no privacy, everybody would see how much you hold in your bank account, how much you pay for your goods, how much you give to your friends, etc. That's most likely not a desirable features of a currency. Now, if you consider cryptocurrencies, um, most of them do not provide any meaningful level of privacy. Take Bitcoin, Ethereum, they don't have privacy per se. Of course, you can have add-on privacy solutions such as uh, CoinJoin for Bitcoin, Tornado Cash, which is now banned in the US uh, in Ethereum. You may also have a privacy preserving cryptocurrency entirely. Uh, such cryptocurrencies are Monero, Zcash, and others. Now, how do they compare with each other? Well, it's difficult to say without a model. And that's exactly what the PDAG is for. The PDAG is built upon the TDAG, the Transaction Directed Acyclic Graph. So I'm gonna first present the TDAG and then speak about the PDAG. First, let's talk about a natural representation of the transaction. You have a transaction, you have a set of input and a set of outputs. What are inputs in that case? Well, in the general case, inputs are coins or accounts, and outputs are also coins or accounts. Well, in the case of uh, UTXO model, these are coins, and in the case of account-based model, this is state of an account. Now, Let's speak about the TDAG. The TDAG takes this intuitive representation but formalizes it uh, a bit further. So the coins or the accounts that I talked about earlier are called states, the circles here. And in between you have what we call a witness. This is uh, this is the blockchain validation rule. So for example, um, it might contain uh, the, the verification of signature or the verification of some proofs for privacy preserving uh, blockchain. So like I said, like I said, states are individual assets on the blockchain and the witnesses they represent data that uh, serve to, to validate the transaction. Now, you may have different edges in the TDAG. You may have consuming edges when you swallow an asset, swallow a coin, consume a coin, spend a coin. But sometimes you just want to read the states. So for that, you have an observing edge. So the consuming edge was on the very left. The observing edge is now in the middle, in the figure. Producing edge is when you transfer a coin, you create a new coin. 
Now, you also have a set of rules. Every state is produced exactly once. So it's mostly a consequence of the hash function. Also, every state is consumed at most once. If that's not the case, well, you have double spending, right? Now, you also have that G is weakly connected and that G has no cycles. Now, if you take the T DAG only, the T DAG allows representing both UTXO based blockchains and account based blockchains. Now, we also want to represent what we call nullifier based blockchains. These are Monero, Zcash, and also some add on, uh, some add -on privacy solutions. The problem is, with the TDAC. Well, if you have privacy preserving cryptocurrency, well, you don't see the true state consumption. So you would only use observing edges. Now, observing edges can be used um, in the, in the TDAC model can be used in, in differently how many times on a state, whereas a state can only be consumed once. So you can only link uh, a state with one consuming edge at most one. So we need to fill this gap. And for that purpose, we actually have the masking edge. Masking edge has the same uh, set of rules as consuming edges, but it appears as an observing edge towards non-evolved parties. So a masking edge is this wobbly edge uh, on the far right. Now, when you don't see the state consumption, you, you must account for double spending still. And most privacy preserving cryptocurrencies have what they call nullifiers or key images respectively for Zcash and Monero. And we actually model them with a diamond and without loss of generality, we call them nullifiers. Now, the masking edges and the nullifiers with the elements of the TDAG create the PDAG. So now that we have the model, we can speak about privacy notions. I'll only talk about untraceability in that presentation for lack of time. But if you're interested in knowing more about unlinkability, please read the full paper. Let's talk a little bit about the adversary. So the adversary is passive. That means uh, it observes only. So, and is computationally unbounded. So for that, we also need idealized cryptography. Otherwise, it could break any cryptographic uh, protocol and mechanism and system. The purpose of A is that it tries to compromise any of the privacy notions, namely untraceability and unlinkability. Let's talk about untraceability first. So untraceability means that if you consider one transaction, all the possible inputs are equiprobable to be consumed. In the case that we depict here, S1, S2, and S3 are all equiprobable to be consumed, meaning that they have a chance of one third to be consumed towards the, the adversary. So the adversary actually only sees observing edges. S1 has a masking edge in that case because it's really consumed. Just note also that in that case, on the far right, you have a nullifier that is produced. Now, from the view of 
of the adversary, like I said, all the input states, they appear as being observed. And we call observing and masking edges the set of ambiguous edges, because they are ambiguous to the adversary or any non-involved parties. Now, untraceability is a compromise if A can output a consuming edge. In the case of uh, our exam example, it's the masking edge from S1 to W. Now, please consider these three transactions where you have S1 consumed in the first, S2 consumed in the second, and S3 consumed in the third. Now, we can range, rearrange this uh, in a bipart.graph. And that makes it handy because we can use previous work. And just as a reminder, um, on the right, you have the view of the adversary. And on the left, you have the true state consumption. So like I said, we can use previous work uh, that treats uh, the anonymization with a bipart graph. This is the work of Vijaya Kamaran and the one of Egger et al as well. And we adapt the notion of core. Core is the union of all maximum matchings. And we, we use it in our model. So let's come back to our example. Our example has the core that is colored here. So you have two maximum matchings. First one is in red, second one is in blue. The edge in violet means that it belongs to both maximum matching. So the observing edges, the dotted arrows, are not part of the core, meaning that the adversary can trim the observing edges and completely de-anonymize the third transaction and compromise untraceability entirely. So the true state consumption is one maximum matching. And if the core of the, the, the of the bipartite graph G star is not equal to G star, then the adversary is able to trim some input states as candidates in our guess. Otherwise, if the core of G is equal to G, then the adversary must rely on the trivial strategy, uh, meaning random guessing from the smallest witness, right? And so take the smallest witness. Well, you have this witness, you have a transaction and you take this witness and you count how many states are linked with ambiguous edges. And this actually gives us the definition of k untraceable transaction. So uh, a transaction is k untraceable if and only if the set of ambiguous edges are cardinal k with k greater or equal to two. Of course, you cannot have untraceability with a k smaller than two. And a pdag, well, a pdag is is actually untraceable up to its weakest transaction. Because remember, the adversary just does random guessing over the, um, over the smallest witness. Now, let's take Monero, Fluor and Fermi. And Fluor and Fermi has a ring signature of size 16 to provide untraceability. So a ring signature is you have a set of public keys and this set of public keys is in that case uh, of size 16 and 15 of them are actually decoy keys only one of them is the is the true signer of the transaction now in in that case in monero um that makes the the, the 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 untraceability set of size 16. And we can see from this schema uh, that I show here that there are 16 states connected with ambiguous edges 
a number of nullifiers and also nullifier produced here. Now, if the PDAG modeling Monero execution of version Florent Fermi, the con corresponding bipartite graph G star is equal to its core, then G is 16 untraceable. So that means that uh, this version of uh, the Monero execution is at most 16 untraceable because we we'd have to check if this uh, this graph G star is indeed equal to its core. Now let's consider Zcash. Zcash um, includes a shielded pool that implements untraceability. And untraceability is achieved uh, by ZK Snark. So you are able to spend a coin um, and prove ownership in a zero knowledge fashion. And so that means that you don't have uh, a set of public keys, you don't have an explicit untraceability set. So that means that your untraceability set for a transaction is any state that was previously produced. And for uh, Zcash execution, it's the minimum, it's the smallest witness again. So it's P untraceable with the smallest witness and each witness takes all the previously produced states as an input. Now, if you're interested in knowing about unlinkability and also more, have a look at the full paper. Otherwise, I'll conclude with that. And let's ask ourselves if with the PDAC model, we can define other notions. For example, scalability or fungibility. In that case, I didn't define confidentiality with the PDAG because well, confidentiality, um, let's say that the PDAG doesn't bring any insight in terms of confidentiality. And also confidentiality can be defined with semantic security. Now the question is, can we compare other systems? Uh, in the future, I will probably uh, update the paper with other systems such as with Quisquis, Quisquis Zether and other models. I thank you for your attention and feel free to consult the full paper.